Hey guys, Chris Wilson with UpstreamVitality.com and I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about oxidative stress. You've probably heard me talking about um, True Cellular Detox and um, why that's so crucial to understand that in order to truly get well, you must fix the cell. We have to look at detox uh, being more than just a colon cleanse, a kidney cleanse, a liver cleanse, a 10 day uh, juice fast, a 10 day whatever, you know. I, I, I'm not speaking bad about these. They are good things to do. But if you're looking at them in a means to getting yourself healed and whole and getting your life and vitality back, it's not, it's, it's the wrong way we're looking at it. And the reason being is if you're just finding out that you're sick and you're just finding out that uh, you're not well, and you might have some autoimmune issues, you might have leaky gut, you might have got uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or known as SIBO, maybe you got candida, maybe you have uh, Lyme disease, uh, maybe you've got some type of mold exposure, maybe you've got hidden infections you don't know about, or maybe you've got mercury fillings, like my wife had. Uh, my wife was actually riddled by uh, three of um, the major ones, mold, black mold, stachybotrys, uh, mercury toxicity and hidden infections from root canal and um, I just missed my turn and um, cavitations but I've talked a lot about those in previous videos so I'm not going to belabor that point today I want to talk about true cellular detox and kind of understand why we have to do detox at a cellular level in order to get well and uh, if we think about oxidative stress so if we think about oxidative stress and its effect on the cell, look, if the cell becomes inflamed, the, uh, it's called the um, bilipid layer, I believe, on the, on the outer circle of the cell, and I don't have a way to draw this for you in here, but on the cell, the membrane of the cell, it's got that layer, that dual layer, and if that cell becomes inflamed, the outside of it becomes rigid, which damages the hormone receptors or the receptors period, for the cell to receive information, meaning to get toxins out and to put the good stuff in that we get from our food, all the nutrients and whatnot. And um, you know, for all my trucker friends out there, what, what does this mean to us? Well, think about it. We spend the day in our truck, driving around, we're uh, in a sedentary lifestyle, one, and two, we're not very active if we're just driving around. Um, not allowing us to stay moving and we're probably eating not the best of foods uh, what did I bring with me for lunch today nothing and um, I do that quite a bit I uh, whenever I truck if I do bring food I will pack some type of like chicken salad and just load it up with nutrients and vegetables so whenever I uh, bring my lunch I just yeah, pack it full of nutrients and um, I do my very best to not eat fast food today because that's what's causing so much inflammation with so many people today and you know as truckers uh, it's it's harder for us it's at least it's more difficult because in the morning time when we first wake up yeah it might sound plausible easy I'll just go without eating food today and then the temptation sets in whenever we uh, are driving around and the, the day surpasses and we're like man I'm getting hungry. Maybe you gotta stop for fuel at a Loves that has a McDonald's in it, or even worse, a Subway. I hate it whenever they got Subways because the bread smells so good. But the problem is, is that bread is highly refined and processed bleached flour. And uh, oh, that's going to, yeah, y'all just saw me back up over a curb. I'm going to have to dump a load right here and it's so muddy outside too <laughs> but um you go into one of these gas stations and you know the smell hits you what's that do it triggers a hormone uh to say hey feed me i'm hungry i haven't eaten in a long time and what do we typically do uh, we try to willpower our way through it oh if i can just get out of here before the temptation overrides me and go you know it, there's a really good spiritual concept behind that too. <laughs> um, who's in control, your stomach or you? You know, are we subjecting ourselves to our flesh or or what?
And so it can be difficult, I know. And uh, oftentimes if I ever do want to eat and want to end my fast, if I don't bring a lunch and I'm out at a uh, fuel stop getting diesel or I'm just out and about and I'm driving around. If I'm driving, it's a lot easier to manage. But if I'm inside a store or I stop to use the restroom or whatever, you know, it's, it, it does become difficult. The temptation is there. I'm not exempt from it, just like uh, my other fellow trucker friends aren't. And um, I, I might buy a bag of like seeds, some sunflower seeds. But if you look at the back of the package, they oftentimes have high amounts of, um, they'll say expeller pressed canola oil, expeller pressed sunflower, uh, safflower, maybe all three, um, highly refined oleic acid. None of that stuff is good. That's what's going to drive oxidative stress and inflammation. And um, let me pull off the curb here and lower my bed. All right. I got stuck for a while, so I know y'all ain't going to be able to know that because the video is not going to show that way, but... <laughs> Yeah, that was, I told you, it was really, really muddy. And uh, I don't even remember what I was talking about. I know it had to do with uh, willpowering your way through subway gas stations and lunch while driving a truck, which is difficult. But um, I would just like to say that, you know, eating once a day and fasting all day, while that is good, it's also a great thing at the same time to mix it up so I encourage you to bring your lunch to bring something healthy and uh, nutritious because doing doing once a day all the time I know there's uh, I wouldn't say it's controversial but there's just mixed feelings on this topic but the best way to go about it is uh, diet variation meaning feast famine cycles so to Remind the body that it's not starving when it's just eating one meal a day. Um, and to change it up, that's the premise of diet variation. And so, oxidative stress, I gotta hit my GPS because I'm gonna go over here and check this other job site before I waste my time coming out here because that one was just absolutely muddy. There ain't no way I'll be able to deliver up that one again. So turn left at Odell. Okay. So what I've been talking about with the uh, true cellular detox, true cellular healing, that see there's mitochondria inside our cells and they produce energy and the energy is known as ATP. Um, and yeah, I'm looking for my turn here. They also produce, this is where it's important to understand that your cells get rid of toxins and they produce a waste product called uh, free radicals. And so take, always use cars as an analogy. If the car is the cell, if the cell is a car, and the engine is the mitochondria. Again, mitochondria produces our energy. So if you think of the mitochondria as the little engines inside of the cell combusting to give the car its energy in order to go, because um, you need the engine. So the gasoline, the fuel, would be what we're feeding ourselves in order to allow the engine to run to produce the energy, the mechanism for the car to go. Okay, so bear with me. So the exhaust fumes of what's being burnt off is the byproduct of the car. So when you put the fuel into the car and the car runs, it's burning off the fuel and it's sending that uh, exhaust fume, you know, down through the pipe. And uh, that's the byproduct it creates. And we all know that if you sit in your garage closed, <laughs> with the exhaust pouring out, that's carbon monoxide, and that's very poisonous and very deadly. Well, this is the exact same byproduct that our cells produced. It's equivalent to the exhaust fumes. And these are the free radicals. 
and these are volatile compounds that can cause a lot of damage to the cell uh, all right if they're not neutralized by antioxidants so when there are not enough uh, antioxidants to counteract the free radicals the damaging effects is called oxidative stress so where's my address 801 it's uh, oxidative stress and so this is why you hear the big hype about uh, oh it's a great antioxidant vitamin C vitamin E uh, blueberries raspberries yeah those things are all great your body however has its own master detoxification system and agent called glutathione and I'll get into that in a whole other video on what glutathione does So the glutathione is your body's own master uh, antioxidant, if you will. It's produced in the body. It's in every single cell of the body. However, oxidative stress correlates to almost every uh, known health condition. Every health condition known to man, excuse me. And uh, it's a major contributor to premature aging. Uh, as the damage increases with age, you know, it's compounded by the environment, environmental stressors. Uh, and then the oxidative stress begins to wreak havoc on our mitochondria, the engines of our cell, and it's also going to wreak havoc on the cell membranes and even DNA. Remember, DNA is contained in the cell, and these are messengers to allow us to express certain genes, meaning they'll turn on and off certain genes given what environment we're, we're surrounded by. So. Reducing oxidative stress through living a healthy lifestyle is a key part of unloading the burden on your cells. But restoring cellular energy, again, this is the mitochondrial function, uh, is truly the key to ensuring your mitochondria, like I said, can function optimally. So we have to properly fuel the mitochondria within the cell to produce um, enough energy to upregulate cellular function in order to, um, I guess, I don't want to say bypass, but in order to slow the release of oxidative stress. And as long as we have functioning, fully optimal mitochondria because of our healthy lifestyle, you know, we're not putting in, um, going back to the car analogy, you can put water in your gasoline tank and you might be able to run to the stop sign, maybe a quarter mile or a mile, but then you're gonna break down. Now, essentially, that's what our bodies do. Our bodies don't necessarily just shut down immediately like that. In some cases, yes, but they begin to break down over time because we're putting in the wrong information. See, the body, all it wants to do is survive. So it's gonna look for a way to just do that. It wants to survive no matter what. So if that means shutting off certain things, certain systems, switching on certain genes, switching off certain genes, it's going to do that because the body's whole function and goal is wanting to survive no matter what condition it's in. You put it into a condition of um, Chernobyl, well, it's going to do everything it can, but that obviously is going to kill the body super fast it can't thrive in that environment. So the environment that we're allowing our body to be in when we're pumping, in essence to the car analogy, water into the gasoline tank or sugar into the gasoline tank, if we're just putting in highly refined grains and carbs and sugars, you know, sugar suppresses the immune system. It causes oxidative stress to compound. It produces those exhaust fumes a whole lot more as opposed if we're to be loading up our body with nutrients. And so these are the environmental stressors, in my wife's case, chemicals, chemical stressors such as mercury toxicity from her dental amalgams, dental fillings. And then she had the hidden infections with the cavitations in the infected root canal. That's another underlying chronic illness. And then she had uh, mold exposure, black mold exposure, which was going to create mycotoxins and uh, biotoxins to also accumulate in the body and create more problems down the road. 
So understanding these concepts and applying the principles by living a healthy lifestyle by what we can do because you're, you can only control your environment uh, through so much. But some of the variables that you can control are <clears throat> um, what you put in your mouth, the type of air you breathe. To an extent, I guess, on that one. You know, we're all exposed to the outside air, but you're the one who chooses to work in a factory that produces a lot of uh, known chemicals that you're breathing in. Or if you're a painter, you know, you're exposing yourself to VOCs, volatile organic compounds, in the paint. Um, there's many examples. And uh, my focus is kind of divided right now, so I'm trying to think and do this at the same time. But I just wanted to kind of give you an idea but we'll talk more about uh, toxicity through our environment through heavy metals hidden infections uh, what we're exposed to <clears throat> so I gotta figure out where I can dump and I don't think I can because it's too wet so I'm gonna end the video here my friends and uh, I appreciate you listening please share these videos and uh, please comment so I can go back through and read every one of them and respond I want to know your thoughts and what your struggles are and if you want any advice on what to do to help with uh, meal planning for trucking and you know you know here look let me say this before I end Whenever I work up in Haslett a lot, there's a Walmart there in town. And it's not a bad Walmart. It really isn't. It's better than the one that I have in my town. They have more options at this Walmart out here in Haslett than they do by the one in my house for organic choices. And so oftentimes what I'll do is I'll go in there and uh, I'll go buy some uh, non-GMO sunflower seeds or non-GMO uh, sprouted pumpkin seeds. They do have those. Now, they vary upon Walmart to Walmart. <clears throat> And then I will uh, buy a couple of avocados, organic, and then maybe like a, uh, bat, a little box of organic mixed greens. And yeah, I'll just eat that. <laughs> you're probably like, dude, that's I can't do that. And you're right, some people can't. It does take some time to build up to that because your taste buds are used to having... Um, trans fatty acid foods that are really salty and but you can given time change your taste buds and the reason why you have those cravings for those foods is all dependent upon your gut microbiome you can alter the bacteria in your gut to crave certain things and uh, we can talk about that in other videos as well but I'm gonna end this one here I'm almost at 20 minutes and uh, yeah I hope there I can find a way to go live um, or you guys can just help me uh, get my subscriber count up so I can shoot live and interact with all you guys. So in the meantime, you know, do your best to have a healthy day. Reach out to me if you need help. I'm way more than just a keto coach. Um, you know, I think all these diet variations are really good to be on, whether it's paleo, Mediterranean, vegan, carnivore. Uh, but the idea behind it is to switch it up and keep the body constantly adapting. So leave me your comments, guys, and I appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you. Take care.